How to build a company worth millions by somebody who's trying to buy one. Over the last couple of months, you might know that myself and Exposure Ninja, we've been looking to buy another business. Now we've started another business ourselves during this time. Uh, we've actually started a lower cost digital marketing agency to serve clients that aren't able to afford to work with Exposure Ninja. But we also wanted to buy another company to add to our service offering. So something that we could sell to our existing clients and where we could offer our services to the customers of the business that we acquire. So over over the last couple of months, I must have looked through maybe 50 to 70 different sets of company accounts. I've talked to founders um, about their businesses to see if there's a good fit. I found it remarkably difficult to find a business that we actually want to buy because very few businesses are actually set up in a way to maximize their value. So in this video, I wanted to talk about how to make a business which is actually valuable to someone who might want to buy it. So let's talk about value. If you want to sell a business for millions, how do you know how big it needs to be to be worth millions? Well, most businesses, the value is based on a multiple of their profit. So there's something called an EBITDA multiple and EBITDA is basically earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. It's basically net profit, but some of the things that are taken out of net profit are put back in. So let's say that a business is worth three times EBITDA. That would mean you take the last year's EBITDA and you multiply it by three. Now different industries and different businesses will have a different multiple basically based on what the going rate is in the industry and also other factors like how big a name that business has, how reliant that business is on the owner, that type of thing. So for example, we were looking at some e-commerce businesses and usually the multiples in e-commerce are maybe two or three times EBITDA. So if a business makes 300K profit one year, then that business might be worth 600 to 900K. Whereas software companies usually have a much higher EBITDA, maybe four to eight times multiple. So a software company that makes the same profit as an e-commerce business might be worth as much as two to even more times more money just because they're in a different space. Now that's pretty crazy if you think about it because actually what it means is that if you buy a software company for eight times multiple, you might have to own that business for eight years before you get your money back, which is a pretty risky thing to do given how quickly things can change in the world of software. But the first thing is to think about the value of the business as a multiple of EBITDA. This means obviously you need to be making profit in the business to have any value at all. Now I've spoken to business owners that are making very volatile little money and we say how much do you want for the business and they say something crazy like 10 times multiple so it's one guy 30 times multiple just not going to happen there's absolutely no way unless you're something like snapchat where you've got massive user base or you're something like uber where you're losing money but still people want to get involved then that valuation is just absolutely absurd so for businesses in the real world you're going to have to think about increasing your net profit which means keeping your costs low and having something obviously that people actually want to buy which leads us nicely onto sales and marketing having a strong sales and marketing process and having the funnels in place having a consistent stream of traffic to the website really helps with your valuation now at Exposure Ninja, we're a digital marketing agency, so we're actually not too fast if a business that we acquire doesn't have very strong marketing presence, because that's actually our speciality. We know we're really good with that, so that's a bit of a value add for us. Actually, weirdly, it makes it more valuable to us if they don't have a marketing funnel in place because we know that we can make that business much more valuable by adding the marketing piece in. But most of the time, a business will be much more valuable if it has a consistent stream of website traffic and people coming through onto the website and turning into customers. Because if you think about it, when any purchaser is buying a business, what they're really doing is they're weighing up the risk in their minds versus the possible gain. And if they know that that they're going to be getting a consistent stream of traffic to the website and they've got three ad channels that are all profitable that really de-risks the purchase for them because they know exactly what they've got coming in they don't need to worry about oh we're not getting any leads anymore because they know that that's a consistent thing that's on autopilot or that is being managed very effectively exactly the same with a sales process one of the worst things that you can do for your company valuation is if you're the founder you be central to the sales process because what's going to happen is 
as soon as someone takes over the business, you're going to be gone or you're going to be mentally gone and they're not going to have the key thing that brought in new business. So it's really important that you've got people or a team in the business which is dedicated to new business generation and it's not just you or it's something that just happens ad hoc. Let's talk about the founder or the directors of the business. <laughs> we were looking at a lot of photography and video studios because that's something that would suit our clients really well. Lots of our clients need photos, lots of our clients need video. So we were thinking it'd be great to own a photography business and what we can do then is we can offer that service to our clients and we can offer marketing to their clients. But here's the catch with that type of business. They are almost always built around the founder who is a really passionate, really talented photographer or videographer and all they want to do is the video and photo. The entire business has been built around them delivering the service. So again, think about when someone buys that business and that person then checks out either you know, physically or just mentally, well, the main asset, really the entire business has just gone. You've just taken the heart out of the business. How much is it worth now? Almost nothing because the whole thing has gone. So having a business that's too reliant on you is really dangerous for your valuation. There's a saying called take yourself out of the org chart. That means when there's an organization chart of your business, you are nowhere to be seen on it because that means there's a strong second tier management in place who can run the business day to day. You are surplus to requirements. That means when someone buys the company, they know what they're going to get. Things are going to carry on as they've been going. Everything's not just going to completely shut down just because you've gone away. Finances. Keep costs lean. You need to be targeting some net profit. It's all very well saying we're reinvesting in our growth and we're not going to aim to be profitable for another two or three years and every business goes through that at some point but that cannot be your long-term default. It's all too easy to be sucked into that thinking yeah we're just reinvesting it's okay it'll be good next year or two years time or whatever. The trouble is with that when an investor looks at that business they're just going to see okay no profit right. Um, we've been looking at some stupid, stupid numbers. We've been looking at some businesses that have gone into administration as well. And I have to say, I haven't seen yet a business that's gone into administration where they wouldn't have seen it coming at least a year in advance. There's people spending obscene amounts of money on ridiculous offices. One London uh, business that we looked at, they had a London office they were spending 35k a month on. A month, their revenue was about 20k, right? 20k in total for their revenue, 35k London office. Even if they paid their staff nothing, which by the way, they weren't, they were massively overpaying their staff, that business is going down. That office is like a chain around its neck, dragging it into the sea. So keep costs lean. That's much more attractive to acquirers than having all this stupid stuff. Treat the company finances with utmost, utmost priority. Too many business owners and too many directors of companies treat the business's bank account like something to rip out profit from. They massively over leverage these businesses. That's why all these companies, as soon as there's any kind of lockdown, they're all just piling out. They're struggling. They're needing government bailouts because they've over leveraged these businesses. They've remortgaged and taken loans accounts against every single asset in the business, just pillaging the company. So there's really nothing left. And then as soon as anything happens, the company can't survive because it's so on the edge. It's so over leveraged. So be gentle with your company finances and treat your company finances like a kind of protected little baby bird in your hand, right? The company must eat first. It's all very well, you know, look after your people, look after yourself, definitely, but look after the company first. The company needs to eat before you eat because if the company doesn't survive, you're gone, the people are gone, you know, you're not doing your people any favours by paying them loads of money in the short term but then running the business into the ground over the medium term. That doesn't help anyone. So build a reliable, scalable business by looking at good margins, keeping your costs low and being sensible about things. Really the major lesson I've learned through this whole experience has been that actually by focusing on the things that make a company most valuable to a potential acquirer, you're actually, those are the same things as just making a good business, which is an attractive business to own and a good business, useful business in the marketplace. So a business should be profitable, a business should have good margins, a business should have a strong leadership team in place that's not over-reliant on the owner. A business should have a reliable and scalable sales and marketing process 
process. These are the characteristics of a business that is set to survive and thrive whatever the market throws at it. So by following this process, like I've got no intention of selling Exposure Ninja, but going through this process has really helped me identify where are the areas that we need to focus on and how can we set ourselves up for success. If I was looking at our business from an outside perspective, what would I be looking at? It's really helped me identify how we can become a better, stronger and more resilient company. So I hope this has been useful. Go forth and make a business worth millions.